going on? Coach Luca here at Bigger Ground Fitness and Performance. Today I wanted to bring you, uh, let's just say, some exercises and a, and a little bit of kind of like groundwork and foundational work on improving your shoulder health. And I say shoulder health because uh, there's a bunch of different things that make up your shoulder health. So, you know, the things that we're going to address today, or should I say exercises, are going to fall in one of these categories is either breathing, uh, and breathing is humongous. We take anywhere from 15,000 to 25,000 breaths a day. And if we breathe shallow and breathe stressfully, uh, it doesn't only, you know, affect, affect stress and anxiety and all these other things, uh, you know, it's a whole barrage of things that, that it creates issues with. But for the shoulders, what it does is it, it creates tightness. So overactive muscles in the neck, in the traps, um, and also in the thoracic spine, which usually tightens up. And then with that, we really don't have good shoulder function because it, it may be restricted range of motion, maybe shoulder stability, it may be a bunch of different things. So it starts with breathing. That's actually a foundation. So breathing and core are foundational. Uh, you know, they're actually kind of like at the bottom of the pyramid if you, if you look at it that way. From there, we're going to go to cervical, so think neck, and uh, thoracic, so upper back uh, mobility, so proper function there. And from there, we're going to go scapula movement. Right, so our scapula, so that moves properly. Because anything that doesn't function right, it, you know, now you have issues at the other joint, right? So above or below. It can, it can even create, like I said, low back issues. And then last but not least, the glenohumeral joint, right? So think ball and socket, ball and socket. So that has to function properly as well. So each one, uh, we're going to go a over a bunch of exercises in each category. And this is kind of the foundation, meaning like if you have, if you have good shoulder health, then you can start putting things on top of it, right? You can start doing handstands and presses and jerks and, uh, you know, chin-ups and pull-ups, you know, to, to your heart's desire. But many people that walk into Vigor Ground and just many people that I talk to, right, the biggest issues are just getting their shoulders to feel good and just to have the capacity to be able to do those things. All right, so we're just going to move through different exercises. I'm going to give them to you. You can knock all these out. Now, here's the thing. Maybe one or the other is going to help you out more. That makes sense. Maybe you'll do one of the drills and it's not really going to help you out a ton, but another one will. I, my recommendation is test and retest. So if you're doing, for instance, just overhead flexion or if you're doing abduction and, or you're just doing anything that you've done with the shoulders that bugs you, test, retest. So do the exercise, retest the exercise, see how it feels. If it feels good, keep it in your warm-ups. Um, if it didn't improve much, then that's, you know, that's fine. Maybe you don't use it. I recommend to just start doing all of these exercises, and uh, I think you'll get the most out of them all put together. So we're going to start with box breathing. Box breathing because essentially uh, think of it as filling up the box, number one, but also in, when we count in seconds. So I'm going to exhale anywhere from four to eight seconds. Uh, I'm going to do it through the mouth. You can do it through the nose. I prefer doing it through the mouth on exhalation. And then I'm going to inhale through the nose for four to eight seconds. Okay, so it's gonna look like this for every breath. So what you will see that I'm doing is I'm putting one hand on my, ch on my uh, chest and another one on my stomach. Once I exhale, when I inhale, I want my belly to rise and my chest to stay flat, okay? Because that means that I'm ex especially expanding my pelvis, right? So imagine in 3D, once I inhale, I'm trying to get air into my stomach and expand, not just this way, but all three ways. I'm sorry, and in the back as well, right? So we're trying to fill up that box. So at the beginning, you may not be able to exhale for a full eight seconds. That's okay, you start with four, Inhale for four, exhale again. And we're gonna do that for one to three minutes. It's a great way for you to retest something. So if you had a, a shoulder range of motion issue and you couldn't really get up all the way, standing, do this for one to three minutes and then retest it. And the thing is, eventually you're gonna start breathing like this in other drills, but we start with the foundation and you do this a lot and this is gonna get better, all right? So when we fully exhale, get our rib cage down, we inhale, we get air into the diaphragm, and then it starts going up, right? And then we pause a little bit on every one. So on a full exhalation, pause for a second, full inhalation, pause for a second. As we talked about the core uh, being very important when it comes to shoulder health. And so if you think about the, the 
the core in general, but especially like the lateral uh, obliques, the basically the obliques become lateral support, right? Meaning if, if they're weak, you're going to have issues at the shoulder. So they're almost like the partner in crime, uh, the whole core in general, but especially obliques. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into a side plank, have a proper side plank, and use a five pound plate. I'm going to put myself in a side plank position. So lat here is engaged, core is engaged, I'm not sagging. And from here, I'm going to start in this position. Here, I'm going to go down, overhead, turn, come back up. Now, the whole time, I'm staying nice and tight, right? Long spine, keeping control here, going through full ranges of motion. And I'm going to do this anywhere from, we could go from 5 to 20 reps. The key is not to be fatigued, right? So we're not going to get really, really tired and get sloppy form because we'll revert back to, uh, let's just say, our foundation, which at this point in time is probably not good, which is why we're doing these exercises. So five to 20 repetitions per side, keeping real quality form and not getting really fatigued. So the second variation of, uh, of working on the core is going to be a single arm plank into a side plank. So from here, we're going to set up. Nice and tall on the spine, tall on the neck, think tall. Put our hand up here on the shoulder, and then we'll slowly rotate through that full range of motion into a side plank. And then we're going to come back down, slow and controlled. So we're rotating through that shoulder, our core engaged. Now, we could do a regression, either on the knees here, going through that same variation, which is a little bit harder, or preferably on an elevated surface, meaning that we have our hands on the bench and are going through that route. Right, so we also have our, our core. We also want to work in a row position. So just like we did the one arm plank, we're now going to go one arm row hold, keep the elbow locked out, rotate like we're in a side plank, holding ourselves in with the scapula, and then use the scapula to bring us back. Now, obviously, I can make this a little bit easier by getting the angle, changing the angle, so I'm controlling. Hips are nice enough, so my core is engaged, and I'm rotating back. All right, so those are certain things that usually you don't work on, where we're hanging and using that scapula to control the movement. 90 degrees, core is engaged, we're not sloppy, we're not hanging, we're keeping it in control. Well, so next in line is thoracic mobility, meaning, see, the, the thoracic spine, it, it wants to, have, has to be able to rotate, right? So we want to be able to rotate our thoracic spine, flex and extend, and then also laterally bend, right? And then the advanced version is doing all that together, which is circles, which is pretty tough. Now, I could have showed you this standing up. The reality is it, it's very helpful to work on, on thoracic flexion, extension, and rotation while you're uh, standing up. But for most people, it's actually tough. It's very tough to... Uh, kind of differentiate whether your movement's coming from the upper back or your lower back. So we're going to start with thoracic extensions of uh, inflection in this quadruped position. And your thought process here really is we're either going to go and push through the sternum. So I'm going to put my hands down, but uh, tell you what, I, what I'm thinking as I'm doing it. So if somebody's pushing my finger through the sternum and pushing it up, I'm flexing as much as I possibly can. And then I'm pushing the sternum into my finger to come back down. So I'm getting my movement from the thoracic spine. So it's still going to look like this with both hands down. So there's a point in my upper back that I'm moving from. Right? When I come here, I'm going to flex. And you can have your neck go long for the ride. So if I'm going into extension here, And if I go to flexion, and back. And it's very key to move from this area. Now, another one that is very helpful for anyone is what I call the shin box. So the shin box is pretty much from martial arts. Um, it's great stuff I just got from Max Schenken uh, going over one of his books. But we're going to go into a shin box, and then we're going to rotate because now we're locked in here with our core so our upper back is going to get rotation so we talked about training rotation one hand is in line with the knee 
The other one is in line with the hip. And from here, now we can also do extension and flexion. And it's going to be a lot more subtle because we are, like I said, rotated. So it's going to be a lot more subtle, but everybody is going to be able to do that. And we do that on both sides. And for all these drills, we're going to go anywhere from 15 to 20 repetitions. Next one, and I'm going to reach out of the screen real quick. And this is something that I've shown before, but it really is very, very beneficial, is the windmill. So with the windmill, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that knee up, keep it parallel so that we're not rotating in our spine. Our arm goes up. We could have a pad here for support. I'm going to reach past my fingers right, to get that scapula going. And then the thumb is going to go down. And I'm, I'm constantly looking at the thumb with my eyes so that my neck gets that mobility as well. This knee stays down on the pad. And I try to keep touching the ground. I may have to lose it. And then I'm coming back over. Right, so I'm reaching by, I'm trying to push this into the pad. So we're getting, we're locking our low back in. So that's why I'm doing this. Knees up, I'm locking my low back in. All of my drive is coming from basically that thoracic rotation. I'm also getting the stretch in my pecs here. And I'm also getting neck mobility. Right, so we're working on a couple of things at once. This is another great variation. So this is a single arm hip bridge with rotation and it's actually another uh, exercise I got from Max Chank and it's like bang for the buck. Absolutely fantastic. The reason why is because we're working glute activation in conjunction with basically shoulder stability and creating that rotation. So, and, and you'll see the weaklings come out here which you can then address and fix. So you want to go about shoulder width apart, kind of like squat stance with your feet. Uh, from, from here I'm going to put I'm not going to let my shoulder uh, fall forward. So you can see how I'm kind of stabilizing it, screwing it down. I'm going to bring this arm on the outside of my knee. From here, I'm going to drive my hips up. And as I drive up, I'm really focusing on the same side hip, or should I say glute activating. So I'm really, this is the one that's going to tend to sag. So I'm driving that, core is engaged, and then I'm reaching across. Okay. So now we're driving that thoracic rotation here, firing the glutes, core is tight. I'm not sagging down on that shoulder. I'm staying stable here. And you can also make it harder by exhaling and inhale. That's a little more advanced. And then coming back down. And we do that same thing for us. Like I said, the breathing part is definitely advanced, but you can just start with the bridges, go five to eight each side. So once, the thing is, once we've done some mobilizations and we can get more range of motion, now we want to activate, strengthen that range of motion, meaning we just want to be able to control, right, with strength, that range of motion that we now built. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. We can go to advanced variations, but this is a great warm-up one and a start one to do right afterwards, is just to stay in our four, you know, quadruped position. And from here, we're just going to open up and we're opening, remember, we're opening from that upper back. So we're looking at our arm, opening as much as we can, and coming back down. All right? We're engaging our core. So we're not twisting for the low back. Uh, another way to integrate you know, warm-ups, for us, we love doing this Spider-Man lunge where we're getting the hip flexor stretch, staying nice and tall here, and then dropping this foot. And from here, engaging core. 1001, 1002. So when we talked about test, retest, if you did this at the beginning, you may be able to get to like right here. Then you do your thoracic mobilizations, you can get to here. And you want to be able to ingrain that and do these drills to get, you know, like I said, anywhere from five to 20 reps, but eight to 10 is a good starting point where you're working, holding, controlling, and now you're building uh, activation through that range of motion. So this next exercise is called soft rolling. And it may seem like something that most people say, well, why are we doing this? Um, and this should be very, very easy. But it's actually a drill that helps us kind of articulate. So meaning we're trying to move our vertebrae and rotate it one by one without the help 
of the whole body moving and stiffening up. And this is something that most people lose with time. They're very glued together and it's, it's tough to do, but this actually uh, helps with, I'll say, thoracic mobility and shoulder function and a lot of other things too, but we're gonna stick with the shoulder right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down, put both of my hands overhead, and then one arm is going to reach. Now, I'm going to take my head also and look at my armpit. The goal is I'm not helping myself with my legs. They're not tensing up, they're not activating, I'm not pushing off. Everything is coming from my upper body. So I'm gonna look across, look at my armpit, reach, and roll. As you can see, that was a lot more challenging than you think, and you might have a tough time even doing that. From here, I'm gonna go back, same thing, my lower body is gonna be completely relaxed. And I'm gonna roll. And we do both sides, and then you notice which side is a lot harder. And the side that it's harder for you is the one you'd practice more, so you might do a couple extra reps on it. Now, once again, this looks very simple. I promise you, it's very challenging. And this is something you should work on before you do your training session, and it will clear up a bunch of things. But once again, put in the rolling patterns because they're very, very beneficial. And once again, if you don't believe me, it's a great thing to do and test, retest, and see how much you improve. So just like uh, thoracic mobility, upper back mobility, neck mobility, similar, we can go shin box. We can go in a lot of different positions and train the neck. And matter of fact, uh, I'll show you guys how we do a lot of different things to just implement neck mobility. Right, so I can be in my shin box position and go side to side. I can close my, or I should say, uh, close my teeth and then tuck the chin. I can draw circles with the top of my head. So if I'm drawing circles with the top of my head, I right, so imagine that there's a pen right here, drawing circles at the top of my head, or I can draw them with my nose. So if I'm drawing with my nose, it's gonna be a little bit different. Now what's great about this, that we can do this from a shin position. We can do this from quadruped position. We can do this from push-up position. If we're doing Turkish get-ups or something of that nature, we can work these positions and drill them. Right, so obviously we start with the groundwork with the foundation and then we can build up from it while we're doing our warm-ups. You know, as we're, when we're doing our figure four positions, here is another way, right? When we come up to our figure four position, we like to do. And once again, five to 20 repetitions, you know, uh, Pavel used to say, uh, the old, like as old as you are, that's how many reps you should do. But like I said, if you're getting anywhere from 10, 15, you're already doing a lot more than you have been. And I promise you're gonna feel much better getting that thoracic and neck mobility and improve it. All right, so now we're going to work on the scapula. And this is like really basic function here, but something that you rarely see anyone doing or working on uh, enough to see the proper scapular function. And I'm going to just do this one standing because it's some, something that you can do pretty much anywhere at any point in time. So imagine like our scapula needs to be able to protract, right? So we're moving from the, we're keeping our core engaged and we're just moving from the scapula as far forward as I can go. Then it has to be able to elevate, then we're going to go pull it back and then retract. So essentially we're doing circles. We're going, and we're creating tension here. So I'm going out, out as much as I can, up, back, and down. And you'll notice if you have a weakness and the more you slow it down, so you can just, you know, you can just do this faster and with less tension, or you can add tension and like you're pushing something and create that control. Now, the thing is, we can also do this in an overhead position, right? So we can go up, forward, down, and back. And the thing is, you'll notice that some of these movements may be very, very tough for you just because the scapula, think about my muscle connection, is just 
it's glued together and it's not moving the way that it should but if it's not it's going to affect your shoulders it's going to affect your shoulder health now standing up like i said this may be difficult because we can do this in many different ways right i can i have my hands out keep them overhead right i can keep them in different positions right so we can go out here and up and down right we can go down keep our hands down and go elevate forward depress back as much as i possibly can and up again so working different positions is going to help you in different scenarios right so think about this here we might be in a farmer's walk this is overhead this is bench press right here we might be doing some wide movements whatever it may be you can work different ranges of motion in different uh, angles and it's going to help you out right so this is a standing variation one so this is our quadruped position where we can do all the protraction retraction right but now we can also do circles so circles imagine that we're pulling the, the the great job thing with this is the feedback that we can get so imagine that I'm pushing the ground away and then I'm ripping it apart and then I'm pulling it down and in so really what I'm doing is I'm using the floor you can see my elbows bending a little bit so try not to bend the elbows using the floor to create that tension, pushing away, down, and creating these circles. So that's a little bit more advanced. But we can also use the floor, for instance, in the push-up position to give us feedback. So if we're doing one arm and we're dropping down, controlling, and then pushing away to work that scapula. So coming down, pushing away. We can also do that on a plate so that we can drop down further. So you can see that there's a lot of things that we can do, but we start off with completely unloaded movements, right? And then we're starting to load them, whether it's in quadruped, whether it's in a push-up position, whether we start using implements and tools. So one of the basic things that we're now getting to is just a regular push-up position and obviously just holding that position and pushing the ground away so that we're engaging, right? So most people will hang on their lats. What we want to do is load up. And we can do scapular push-ups here by controlling down and then pushing away. And like really keeping control of that full range of motion. If we want to load that extra, now we're just going to push up position, get a wider stance, same thing, controlling down and pushing away. And you'll be surprised, once again, how challenging that kick may be to be able to control the full range of motion on the way down eccentrically and then push control all the way up. But that way we're strength, that we're not only building strength for that full range of motion, we're actually building that range of motion through the scapula. So we're also going to do a pull-up slash chin-up hold. Now, the key here is pull-ups and chin-ups, great exercises. But if you cannot pass the overhead flexion test, which we've talked about before, right? If you're up against the wall, my low back, my upper back, my neck is up against the wall, and I go overhead, and I cannot touch the wall when I exhale. So if I cannot touch the wall with my thumb and with a locked out elbow, good posture, it means I probably can't go overhead loaded. And then a lot of pull-up, chin-up work may not be the best thing yet. Right? I say, yep, yeah, because we've been implementing all these exercises to improve shoulder function, range of motion, and control. But if you can do that, then this is a great exercise where I may even be engaging core a little bit here, and I'm holding. Right? So we can hold. We can also retract. I mean, elevate and depress. Right? So we're keeping core engaged. Elevate depress and then the most advanced here would be obviously our single arm holes we can get some support or we can hang straight which is a lot of grip work too but it can really help out the shoulder as well now remember it's not a one size fits all so each individual is going to be different here but here these are some drills that can really help you improve things once again if you cannot pass the overhead shoulder flexion test work the other drills ground based drills non-loaded drills and you're going to have a lot more success with those than jumping straight to these 
So now we're going to go do some uh, glenohumeral joint exercises which should stay to improve function. And we're going to do some hip bridges. Now I'm going to just show one variation, uh, but really we can have three different positions of the hand. So one is fingers up, fingers down, and fingers sideways. Uh, I'm just going to go fingers sideways for this one. So as I drive through my hips here, I'm going to also think about opening up my, my clavicles, right? So I'm not all collapsed. So as I drive through, I'm opening up my chest and squeezing my glutes. Abs are nice and engaged. Come back down. So if I was in this position, same thing. And you'll see how certain, my, uh, certain I would say, positions may be harder for you. And you may not even be able to go all the way through, and that's okay. You just go as much as you can in making sure that you're not collapsing and you're staying nice and open here, ripping those clavicles apart. This is somewhat of an old school exercise, but it still works well with shoulder dislocations. And you'll start, you want to start shoulder width apart, but if you can, you can go obviously wider here. And you'll watch me from the side as I come over, I'm going to dislocate and control. So I want to control this movement. Touch my glutes, come back up, and over. Now a way to do this, you know, obviously you can go wider and wider, is also to use a band, because with a band, if you have a tough position that you can't go through, you can pull the band apart and get yourself some range of motion, and also come back. As you become more proficient at it, you can just start coming closer on the stick or pulling apart the band a little bit less. You can see that's actually Very challenging for me. And once again, like I said, 10, 20 repetitions, you shouldn't feel extremely fatigued as you're doing this. Just like with everything else, so we want to create activation in those end ranges. Remember, end ranges are the toughest parts. Uh, if you think about a bicep curl, the end range is here, right? So we're usually strong here to here, but at the top, way at the top and way at the bottom, we're weaker. So same thing with the shoulder ranges of motion. We're going to grab the dowel, stay nice and tall. Next neutral position, we're going to come up as high as we can in 1001, 1002. Bring it back down. So we're, we're working to those end ranges 1001, 1002. So we're going to do both an extension, or should I say, end range going extension and inflection. So here we're going to go bent over position and come from this position. Same thing, we're going to come up. Now we'll stay locked out. 1,001, 1,002, and bring it back down. So core is engaged here. We're bringing it up. 1,001, 1,002. And the key on, on these ones is to make sure that your traps are not overly engaged. Right? So we want to get that mid to low trap to work uh, and have the shoulders functioning properly on that one. Okay, so just pay attention to that as you're going up. We're not overactive on the traps. All right, so remember you're in that situation. You kind of want to have space between your ears and your shoulders because here there's no space. So now this is the shoulder circles, and probably you've heard, hey, shoulder circles are good for shoulders. I mean, shoulders like hips are a ball and socket joint, so they love circles getting full range of motion. And what we kind of want to do with these is, you know, slow stuff down at first. So I'm not going to rotate through my hips. I'm going to stay nice and locked in. I'm going to go to the end range here, and then I'm going to turn my arm and try to get as much out of that. Notice how I'm controlling it. So, you know, you'll see a lot of people kind of swinging it through. That means I don't have control. So if I'm going here and then rotating, and I can go the other way around to my end ranges. Right? So essentially, once I can't go further anymore, that's when I start rotating and getting that full range of motion. If at any point in time you feel like you're weak, What's the good thing to do is to actually do smaller circles and within that larger range of motion. So once I get here, let's say right here, I get a small circle. Right As I go through, maybe here I'm very weak. I'm going to get a small circle. I'm going to follow through. Right, so I can start controlling these ranges of motion where I have weakness and go both ways. Because like I said, we want that ball and socket joint to function properly. Because when it doesn't, when it doesn't, it's not able to move well in a socket, the body's going to either restrict range of motion, create pain, 
you know, create, I said weakness because the signal of the nerves is not going to be as good. So this is something that is very, very good to implement into your warm-ups. And once again, test, retest, see how you feel. If, it, if it's better, keep it in your warm-ups. So now we're going to work on some external rotation. And I'm starting on the ground because, once again, it's the simplest form, uh, and I would say the most regressed form. Now here I'm going to keep my knees bent. I'm going to push my low back into the ground a little bit. I start with my hands by my side. Now they're going to slide up, and right about halfway, I'm going to turn them around into this basically L position and drive and push. So I'm trying to push my forearms against the ground. On the left side, I can't do it, but I'm working it. And I'm going overhead and coming back down and rotating and sliding. So we do that. Reps. Once again, this is less challenging than once we're going to go into a seated and a standing position. So now we're just in a seated position. We're making this a little more challenging. I'm going to go up against the wall. And you can see that, like, for me, this is, this is challenging, right, to go into a keeping my core engaged, to try to get these, my forearms to the wall. But the attempt is what matters. So from here, I'm going to go from this W position, slide up against the wall, lock out. Drive my forearms and elbows into the wall. And the key is, once again, I'm trying to really push my low back into the wall so I'm not extending my, my low back. And so this is pretty challenging, and you'll feel that activation. Another thing, and you can see I pulled out the magic stick, <laughs> is to essentially press here, right? So if I'm driving my elbows into the ground, or should I say into the wall, from here, trying to not lose contact, and lock out. And you can see how I lost contact, but I'm attempting not to. <sighs> Keep on court gaze. <sighs> so I'm working on that once again, external rotation and keeping control and activating in those positions. Last but not least, we're doing this standing. So in the standing position, we're a little further away from the wall. We're going to have our butt, our upper back, and our neck against the wall. And you can see that this is challenging for me to try to push the forearms into the wall and from there I'm attempting to do that and slide it up. So one of the things to think about that's challenging is I may foam roll right to get to get a little more range of motion there I may do some thoracic mobilization some things that we were showing before to be able to put my forearms on there and then work that activation. So what we talked about earlier is, right, we're going to use all different modalities, whether it's stretching, whether it's soft tissue work, to get our ranges of motion and then strengthen those ranges of motion through these drills of activation. All right, so just remember, this is not the end all be all. These are not all the drills that can help you out, but there are a lot of these drills that can significantly help you. You know, use, I would say, some common sense if you're having legitimate pain doing any of these movements, stop right away. All these movements are meant to make you feel better. They may be somewhat uncomfortable at times because, like I said, you're tight or you're weak in certain areas and you're working them. But you should, if you test and retest and you feel better and you get more ranges of motion, you're on the right track. So pick and choose, use some of these exercises, all these exercises, and implement them into your everyday, especially... Uh, I, I would say this is not just for your upper body training or just for your training. This is important just in everyday life. If you're sitting at a computer a lot, you're in these positions or you're standing and core is weak, you're in extended positions, these drills will really help you to improve shoulder function. Remember, we start with breathing and we build the foundation. Breathing, core, thoracic and cervical mobility, then we go to scapular movement, and then we go to glenohumeral. So implement these drills, let me know how you did and how you feel.